All right, in this little mini video, I want to show you how we can find the minimum flow rate for counterflow liquid-liquid extraction. So let me just write that up here. So in this case, I've got a flow rate of 1,000 kilograms per hour that's 35% acetone in water, and the solvent is going to be 100% chloroform. What I want to know in this case is what will be the minimum flow rate for the solvent that will produce a product that's no more than 10% acetone. So to get started, we will plot the given information. So my feed is 35% acetone, so 35% acetone. Here is my feed. The solvent will be 100% chloroform, and I want my raffinate to be 10% acetone, so that will be on this equilibrium curve where acetone is 10%. So this is going to be the highest quantity of acetone allowed in the product. All right, so in this case, I do not know what the mixture composition is going to be because I don't know what the mixture flow rate is going to be. So I'm going to begin by drawing my FS line because, hey, that's easy, okay? But I can't draw RN to the extract one because I do not know where along the FS line is going to be the mixture composition. But what I can do is I can figure out what's going to be the highest slope for the FE1 line that will not shoot me out into the single phase region. So up here is single phase, everything down here is two phase, and I wanna make sure that I stay within the two phase region. And how that happens is I can't go above a tie line. So, from F, let's mark out a tie line. And from there, it looks like this is the tie line that is closest. I'm going to go ahead and extend that. But this is going to be the maximum value for E1. It's going to correspond to the minimum value of S minimum. And this will put the delta, if I connect R, N, and S, this will be my delta minimum. Now, how does this answer the question of how much do I have in the mixture? So, I can do that by connecting the points, undoing what I've done in the past. This point here is now my mixture. I can do the math several different ways, but the way that's going to be the easiest is for me to take the length of Fm, which is going to correspond to the flow rate of S, and compare it to the length of Ms, which corresponds to the flow rate of F. So S minimum is going to be the flow rate, 1,000 kilograms per hour, times Fm's length over Ms's length. Now when I do this measurement, I'm on an iPad screen, so it's going to probably be very different than what you're measuring. Uh, but I get one point five centimeters for Fm. From M to S, I get 6.5 centimeters. Multiply that times 1,000 kilograms per hour. And if we do that multiplication, We 
I get S minimum is 250 kilograms per hour. Now this is going to be rough because it depends on exactly how well I measured things, how exactly how well I plotted things, what the thickness of my lines were, so many things. So usually what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and use, you know, one plus a correction, okay, times S minimum and choose that as my actual value of S. So if I were to choose S equals 1.2 times S minimum, then I would choose 300 kilograms per hour as the flow rate that I would want. Now just, I'm not going to complete this one, but let's now switch over to this new problem. What's gonna change if I do that? Well, if I increase the amount of S, M is going to move over, okay? If M moves over, that's going to move E1, if I move E1, that's going to change the location of the delta. Okay. So that concludes this little mini video. To count off the steps, you would do exactly the same thing as we had done in the previous video once you know your actual solvent flow rate.